Hello, this is part four in a series of videos on the astrology of spiritual enlightenment. You do not need to watch any of the first three videos in this series in order to watch this one. The first three videos do give an excellent background and lead up to this video, but this video also stands by itself so you can watch this without watching any of the first three. Also, I want to mention if that you do want to watch any of the first three videos at astrologydc.com. You can scroll to the bottom and you will see them there in the list of free videos. This fourth video, this complete version that I'm doing now is available only to subscribers. Okay, now in part three, I presented information on one of the vibrations that is active at the time of spiritual enlightenment experiences, that is the seven vibration. Again, by vibration we mean we divide the circle into seven pieces and when planets are distributed from each other in these sevenths, you know, they're one seventh or two sevenths, etc., apart from each other, they're in seven vibration. And a person can have a spiritual enlightenment experience, and again I define that in the first video, as a spewing of bliss or connectedness or oneness with everything, these kind of elevated feelings and thoughts that can happen. They just pow, they might happen once or twice or very rarely for any individual. For some people, they never happen. But it's very interesting to see what's going on astrologically when an experience like that occurs. And especially, I'm reading here from the first paragraph of this slide, especially when a seven vibration practice like yoga and meditation are involved in fostering the experience. So seven vibration is introverted, meditative. And so when a person's in a deep seven vibration activity, because they have they have strong seven vibration planetary configurations, they're getting triggered by transits, it will sometimes awaken the this sensitivity. Now we're going to learn about another vibration that can trigger spiritual enlightenment experiences because there's not just one vibration that can do it. And what we're going to learn about today is the 43 vibration. <laughs> and this often just totally shocks people or seems unrealistic that we can go up to such high vibrations. So we divide the circle into 43 pieces. And why 43? Well, there's two things I can tell you about 43. Number one, it's a prime number, which means the only numbers you can multiply together to get 43 are one times 43. There are not another set of numbers that multiply to equal 43. And these prime numbers, have their own unique essence and quality. They are the building blocks of everything. And the second thing I can tell you about 43 vibration is that we did a lot of research on 43 vibration. We went through a database of over 20,000 people and we took the charts of people that have the biggest 43 vibration configurations, planets, conjunct in 43 vibration with the smallest orb. The people who have planets 1 43rd, 2 43rds, 3 43rds, etc. Almost exactly with the most planets, smallest orbs, and we analyzed what they have in common. Then we apply it to our chart interpretation and wow, it's very clear what it does. And we're going to see another example of it right here of what the 43 vibration does in people's charts. By the way, I have a little paragraph here, third paragraph, reviewing how we think about vibrations in vibrational astrology. We don't need to go over that again, but if you're new to vibrational astrology, you might want to pause and, and have read that. Now, what does the 43 vibration do? It discovers a gift beneath our social roles. So the people with a lot of planets in 43 vibration, they look around at the world and they say, oh, look at what all the people are doing. Look at what I'm doing. And why are we doing it? What's motivating it? And look at the roles we play. Oh, this person's a nurse. This person is, 
you know, a car mechanic. This person is a farmer. This person is a plumber. We play these roles in life. We have roles in our relationships, husbands, wives, children. And, you know, we have our parents and we have our clubs and we're all engaged in a network of activity. And how do we become part of that network? And did we have to? And where are we? How are we making that decision to live this life? <laughs> so these high vibrations get into very deep things. The, the lower vibrations are very fundamental activities of life. But the 43 is seeking also something special. What is the unique thing that we could be and what are we underneath all of this? A lot of people don't really think about these things. We just live our lives. But if you have 43 vibrations strong in your chart, you think about it. <laughs> you think about why am I in this social fabric? in this world, playing these roles and these activities? Could I be doing something different? What's behind it all? And not, it's not really just that personal I. It's really more philosophical. It's not that highly personalized. It's like, what is behind it all? So to continue with what I have on this slide, the 43 vibration drives a person to a deep level of sincerity. It's also very self-critical. It's, it's got this Saturnian quality of what's going on here, of cutting away. So it's self-critical. It's often quiet and humble. There's a sincerity to this. What's going on? What, what's making all this happen? We are people. We've decided that we'll have schools and churches and everything we do. We've made it. How is it that we're choosing these things? So the 43 vibration gives, this, this sentence kind of captures the essence of 43 vibration. A fiery, incisive desire. It's fiery. It's, it's humble, it's quiet, but it's, it really wants to get it. It, 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 it. It's not playing around, right? A fiery, incisive desire to drive to a, pure essence within themselves and live from that point. Okay, so it also has a little bit of, if, if you watch the videos in Zodiac Science, also a little bit of an Aries quality. So this is what 43 is doing. So what, now this is interesting, what we found when we did this research and we looked at all the people who have very strong 43 vibration, lots of planets, all 143rd, 243rds, etc., very tightly. They also share this in common, that what they find within themselves is, in a sense, nothing. <laughs> it has a weak sense of its own identity. The 43 vibration seems to probe into this kind of void or nothingness that's behind everything. And sometimes this creates a very bleak attitude towards life, like existentialists who say, you know, it's like all the world's a stage and it's just a game. It's just like some kind of absurd phenomenon. So they may not find anything bright and brilliant beneath ever, everything. Other people, when they go into this 43 vibration, it inclines to this kind of spiritual view. The difference between the like a bleak existence, I'm not saying all existentialists are bleak, but a bleak or colorless kind of existentialist view. And the spiritual is often, the spiritual has more, you might say, optimism or more heart or more sense of, of a underlying goodness. Or maybe that's not deep enough. I'm not, I'm not saying who's right or wrong. I'm just saying what 43 vibration leads to, but it will lead to one of these kinds of approaches to life. Another thing you'll find out with the 43 is 
because there's a sense of like a nothingness or a or it could be a kind of universality that it has a very weak sense of identity because it's not identifying with these roles with these activities not even with its genetic heritage it has a weak sense of identity a sense that you are what you say you are <laughs> you are what you do and also with 43 vibration they're often more interested in what you have to say than what they have to say because they're just kind of this open radar to see what is uh, and they want to keep changing and transforming because there's a sense you are what you choose to be what's interesting about this is it's consistent with every person that we found in our research with these strongest 43 vibration uh, in the, you know in their chart and at some point I'll make a video specifically on the research findings and and present that and this was done you know by our team of, of researchers in vibrational astrology so I'll present those results but here I want to just present to you the conclusion uh, you know what we found and later on I'll in some other video I'll sh show you kind of document and show the charts of these people so the 43 vibration drives to remove superficial definitions of oneself to transcend or break through social roles and games this inclines the 43 vibration to seek a state of mind that is free of being defined by external circumstances right I'm just saying the same kind of things in different words to get the feeling of this this can easily lead to a sense of feeling connected to universal principles and deeper or higher dimensions right it's one of the possibilities so 43 vibration can trigger a spiritual experience if the person has strong 43 vibration configuration in their chart in a minute we're going to see somebody who has very strong 43 vibration and it gets triggered by the tra the transits I mean it's really mind-blowing I can't wait to show this to you in a few slides and the spiritual experience happens now this person was open and receptive and oriented to it if the person isn't it won't happen in exactly that way they might fall into a different feeling of uh, maybe of of just an emptiness you know some kind of feeling of just floating in space or something so it can it can vary depending on the rest of your chart your the way you were brought up the decisions you've made the conclusions you've come to so each vibration is going to give one particular quality and the context of it will tell us more things about what happens so here it is it's Rajneesh a spiritual teacher Rajneesh also known as Osho he has a very strong planetary configuration in the 43 vibration chart I'm going to show it to you and he had a very specific enlightenment experience you know happened I think it was over about five or ten minutes or something he had this huge awakening and we can look at the transits at that time and we will see you're gonna see I'm gonna show you the by wheel with his 43 vibration chart in the middle 43 vibration tra transits it's everything lines up it's amazing so note that the enlightenment experience uh, and even multiple enlightenment experiences do not guarantee that the person integrates that enlightenment with everything else in their lives I've emphasized this in the other three videos <clears throat> excuse me and if you haven't watched them I just want to state it here that the way we're understanding these enlightenment experiences in vibrational astrology is they do not necessarily generalize to the rest of the person's life so they may not be uh, so wonderful in their social personal interactions or any other number of things in their lives okay so the very last point here B having a strong experience does not guarantee future experiences <clears throat> with the same level of intensity and purity and point a it does not indicate that you're going to integrate into your other activities Agni here just means this I'm using to mean this the spark of life 
Okay. Bottom line, an enlightenment experience doesn't, uh, in the context that we're talking about here, does not mean that you're so pure and holy. It means that you, your energy went and your attention and awareness went into this dimension of experience. Now here's the 43 vibration chart of Rajneesh. This is not his birth chart. It's the 43 vibration chart of the birth chart. It's, it happens to be in the tropical zodiac, but the zodiac doesn't matter here because we're just going to look at the planetary configurations. And he has what we call in Western astrology a kite. He has Mars at 14 Leo, opposition Neptune at 13 Aquarius. A very strong one degree orb, slightly less than one degree orb, Mars Neptune opposition. Mars Neptune means you want to achieve something visionary, something idealistic, something that lifts you up. So Mars Neptune in 43 vibration, he's wanting to achieve, to discover, to enter into a world that's behind the social roles of people. It's a basic motivating force. And the biggest vibrations are the ones with the most planets. Here we have a kite. You're not going to see kites, you know, or strong configurations like this in very many vibrations. This is one of his strongest vibrations. And it's describing the, one of the most important driving forces in his life. He's a seeker trying to find out what is this will? What is this consciousness? What is this beingness behind what we do? And amazingly, you can see it astrologically. It's amazing. You know, when I entered the study of astrology, I, I couldn't imagine that astrology would show all of these possible details. Now notice, that Venus and Jupiter are forming the Grand Trine and the sextiles to Neptune. And Venus is at 13 degrees. This whole thing spreads only about one degree. The Venus Trine Jupiter is fundamentally exact, two minute orb. So the whole configuration is very tight. And the Venus Jupiter means the richness, the grandness, right? Jupiter big, Venus beauty, that he's seeking behind appearances some kind of wealth. Think about how many stars there are, how many galaxies there are. Think about the beautiful mountains, the beautiful rivers, lakes, forests, the wealth and richness of life. So behind this, the facade, there's some kind of incredible abundance and power and majesty and the grandness of the beauty. When you go into palaces and cathedrals, you see how human beings have connected with the immensity of, we can call them the divine gifts. This is what this configuration is telling us. The amazing thing about vibrational astrology is we see right into the heart and soul of people. This is what's going on. And not only does he have these four planets nearly exact in this configuration, notice that Mercury is conjunct Jupiter. See, Mercury at four degrees is not close enough to the 13 and 14 degrees to participate in the entire configuration but it is close enough to Jupiter. So Jupiter is also connected to Mercury. In a similar way, um, Uranus is close enough to Neptune. And oh, by the way, minor detail, it's not just Neptune, it's the Sun. It's, <laughs> this is five planets. The Sun is at 14. Five planets all within one degree. And when the Sun is involved, it becomes a fundamental purpose of your life. It's like what you see is what you get. This is what you do. This is Rajneesh. Can you believe that we can find 
the driving motivation, no matter what it is, no matter how exotic, unusual, spiritual, or whatever, it's there in the birth chart. We don't see all the details of exactly how it will develop. That depends on where you're born, etc. Now, you're born in India <laughs> with that heritage. You can see the potential that of what his life becomes. Okay, now, we also know that Rajneesh is, uh, has allegations of abuse of, uh, of many kinds to people. And as I discussed in the first three videos, that's not surprising. And you can, you can go back and watch those three videos if you want to, you know, uh, understand that. But we're looking at spiritual enlightenment here as simply a particular kind of experience. That doesn't mean you're perfected. There may, you know, the word enlightenment can have different meanings in different contexts. And we're just using it in one particular meaning in one context. Okay. Now, Wow. He describes, Rajneesh describes a moment. He says it's just before midnight, he believes, that he has this experience. And he describes it in detail. What, what happens? This awakening that he has. So, we do a pie wheel. In the inner ring is his 43 vibration chart. That's it. The, there's the kite. Same thing we just looked at. And in the outer ring are the transits. At the time, this was at March 21st, 1953, at 11.50 p.m. in Pune, in Maha, Maha, sorry, Maharashtra, Maharashtra province in India. Now, so we do the chart for the approximate time, best as we know, time of the spiritual experience. All four points in this kite configuration have a transiting planet on them. <laughs> Just unbelievable. I thought maybe one or two would have, you know, something act all four of them. Well, what's happening? <clears throat> Again, in the outer ring is the 43 vibration of the transits. Transiting Mercury is at 14 Leo. Remember, 13 and 14 are the exact points, 13 to 14 degrees. That's where these five planets are. His Sun, Neptune, Venus, Jupiter, and Mars. <coughs> Excuse me. Mercury's at early 14, right there, on his Mars. And that, of course, means it's opposition Sun and Neptune. It's trying Venus and Jupiter. It's, you know, it's activating all the planets. It happens to be on his Mars. Transiting Mars a little further away at 16 degrees is on Venus. So Mars is not close enough to be making strong sextile to Sun and Neptune. So it's a little bit weaker, but it's it's pretty strong. Uh, Mars is trying his Mars. Uh, Mars, Mars trying, isn't that interesting? A uh, two degree orb. We allow uh, more, you know, at least two and a half degrees for transits in a natal chart, a little over five degrees for transits and compatibility, we like to use about half of the orb we use in natal charts. So it's within orb. And if you're experienced in vibrational astrology, you know this phrase we use, same planet to same planet is especially important. This is Mars to Mars. So Mars is involved. And both transiting and natal Mars. Anyway, the Mars is not exactly at the 13 to 14 degrees. And the moon, now the moon is moving extremely fast. So the moon won't be, let's just say, the, well, the moon isn't there throughout this whole time period, but it is there for, for at least a little bit of it. We'll, we can go into the Sirius software and do the time adjustment, see how long the moon is there on his Jupiter, and then goes to moon, moon, which the moon is over there. It goes over this little stellium. So actually during the spiritual experience, Moon would cross the Mercury, and then Jupiter, and then the natal moon. So it's going to go through this rather rapidly. And then there's the slow-moving transit, Pluto. And I'm going to show you something about Pluto. It's at 11 degrees, and it's retrograde. So the previous few days, Pluto was moving into this configuration. I'm going to show you more about the Pluto in the next slides. Okay. 
but I have here no transient moon moves very quickly, so it may not be there as the time is approximate. This moon may not be there, but at least three of these four points are activated at the time of the Enlightenment experience. It's, it's just amazing, just amazing. And if we look at the transiting planets, we're going to see that the Pluto sets the tone. Let me show you this now. Uh, yeah, here it is. Rajneesh explains that the Enlightenment experience happened after about seven days of experiences that culminated in the powerful transforming experience. So he had about a week leading up to this. So for this week, he's having all kinds of, let's say, mystical things are just happening. Bam, bam, bam. So it's really not just this moment. This moment is kind of like a peak culmination of the entire week. Now this really, <laughs> it just, you know, that's phrase, you can't make these things up. It just, let me show you this. I'm going to go into the serious software. Here's the by will. I'm in the software now, I'm not in the PowerPoint. And I'm looking at the by will. This is the same by will. I just don't have the aspect lines drawn in. But that's exactly what we were looking at. There's Mercury at 14 Leo on Mars. Mars at 16 Sag, Pluto at 11 Aquarius, and Moon at 15 Aries. Now, let's go to time adjust. And I've selected the transit chart as my main chart, the chart I'm selected from. So it's the one that will get adjusted. I'm going to go seven days earlier. I've got seven days. I'm going to hit the left arrow because I want to see where Pluto was when this week the the week that changes his life and peaks on that seventh day for the final transition you might say that that you know changes the course of his life let's hit that left arrow go seven days earlier pluto is at 17 aquarius just beginning to move in to the configuration if i go let's go one day later one day later, now I'm six days before, five days before, four days before, four days before the Enlightenment experience, Pluto is at 14 Aquarius. During this week, Pluto is moving right over the configuration. And he is having this deep, you know, kind of cathartic, transformation going on and then we go forward you know to to the exact time of of the 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 full um, most powerful crescendo of this whole week here we are May 21st at at 23 hours 50 minutes 11 11 50 p.m. and let's see if we can really use this moon I'm gonna go one minute earlier I think the moon is moving so fast, we probably really shouldn't be considering it. I'm going to go one minute earlier to see how fast it's moving. Uh, oh, it's not moving that fast. Uh, 15 Aries 30, 15 Aries 07. No, the moon is there. It's moving, let me go another minute, 1507. It's moving less than half a degree a minute. So it was there, for example, at 11.47, let me go to 11.46, four minutes before the 11.50 time, the moon is right there at the 14 degrees, right at that 13 to 14 degrees. So right around, let's see when it enters 13 degrees. I'm going to go back a minute, a minute, a minute. Here we have moon at 13, Aries 13. And here it is at 12 Aries 50, so right around 11.42 or 11.43, the moon has entered 13 degrees, that critical strong point. That's right around the time of the experience. We don't know the exact minutes. He says right about bef just before midnight, he thinks. So yeah, the moon is there. This time it just is wonderful because you can see how the planets are moving over time. and. You, you don't know because everything is moving 43 times faster in a 43 vibration chart. You, you don't know 
how quick they're moving. You know, unless you're some kind of, you know, uh, you know, savant or something, and you you, know, you can multiply huge numbers in your your mind automatically. But I mean, it, it's just very handy to go to time adjust and see how fast it moves. It's amazing. It's amazing that during. Let me just review this. During that week, Pluto is bringing this up exactly what he experiences on that day. You know, or for a couple of days before, Mars is crossing over it, still within orb on that day. Mercury's right on it at the experience. And at that minute, at the, within, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, the moon is there. <laughs> it's just pinpointed the whole timing from the week to the day to the minutes with the moon acting as the trigger for the time of day. There it is, my friends. That's the trigger. And if you look at the planets involved, Mars is, you know, we think of Mars as a warrior and a fighter. Mars is getting things done. It's doing it. So he's, he's doing it. Mercury, the thinking, the moon, the mood, the Pluto bringing everything up. It's all getting triggered by major, uh, major transits at that moment. So there it is the astrology of spiritual enlightenment experiences. We now understand the astrology behind, you know, or motivating Rajneesh's spiritual experience. It's just amazing. And the reason I'm so confident that it's this is not just a coincidence is because of all of the research that went on prior to this to let us know what the 43 vibration means and and the techniques we understand go to the strongest vibration. I didn't look at a thousand different charts and happen to find one. I noticed that Rajneesh has very strong 43 vibration. I said, oh my goodness, that must have been activated at the time of the spiritual experience. Had to be. So I knew what to look for and there and it was there even stronger and more precise than I could have even imagined. Okay. So, oh, here's the description of the experience. He says, I went to sleep. It was a very strange sleep. The body was asleep, but I was awake. It was so strange. Near about 12, my eyes suddenly opened. I had not opened them. The sleep was broken by something else. I felt a great presence around me in the room. It was a very small room. I felt a throbbing life all around me, a great vibration, almost like a hurricane, a great storm of light, joy, ecstasy. I was drowning in it. 43 vibration can do this. You know, if you have the momentum in your life that this is the priority, remember that Mars opposition Neptune is the, the line of symmetry. It's the axis on which this is all built. Um, and so it happened for him. Okay. And also the Venus Jupiter that the Venus Jupiter in his chart are the surrounding planets and uh, you know he develops this lifestyle where he has all these expensive cars I think it's dozens of them like some kind of crazy wild thing uh, of these like Rolls Royces um, so he was a guru who enjoyed a Venus Jupiter lifestyle is this amazing or what we're seeing the description of what's going on now I'm not judging it so much I'm just describing the energy you can judge it, I can judge it in terms of what we think, whether this is healthy, whether this is good for him, is it good for humanity, you know, what's going on, but we see the energy configurations. I think one of the things the astrology helps us with is we now understand how a person can have an enlightenment experience and yet also carry on their lives this way. So if you watch this whole sequence of videos, I think it gives us a very clear and deep understanding of, of how to understand and appreciate what goes on with these enlightenment experiences and some warnings about not overgeneralizing the importance of them in terms of the rest of the person's life and how they can affect us uh, in simple terms. Having an, a spiritual enlightenment experience does not generalize to every area of your life, and the person can be abusive, difficult, 
and, and have fundamental problems in, in areas of life and still have a spiritual enlightenment experience, it can happen. Um, okay, so uh, opening the door to enlightenment experiences, vibration, let's review, vibration 7, and that means multiples of it, especially the soft multiples, 21 and 63, finding the still center, 7, 21, 63, they help you get to this calmness, this still deep center, and that helps helps the opportunity, brings the opportunity. 91, now I haven't shown this, but I can make some videos on this. It's fascinating. 7 times 13, we see this in Paramahansa Yogananda's chart. We see it in Bruce Lee's chart. How they can lead to transcendence through inner focus. So people who discipline, discipline, concentrate with this huge willpower, we're going to break through. We're going to go there. So if you know the story of Bruce Lee, the story of Paramahansa Yogananda, this will, this 13 desire to overcome through discipline. Wow, it describes both of them. So seven vibrations, especially soft overtones, like seven times three, seven times nine, 91 vibration, and 43 vibration, as we just saw with Rajneesh. There are different doorways into these enlightenment experiences. And a five vibration sometimes inclines to a spiritual enlightenment experience, but you need more than five. Five by itself will in no way bring you to a spiritual enlightenment experience, but sometimes it adds. So if there's a strong 43 and a strong five going on, the five can help. And five often leads to you might say mild spiritual enlightenment experiences in the sense of just feeling alive, feeling freed up, feeling just like you're part of life. The five has the benefit of integrating with our personal life. It doesn't go off to as many weird extremes like 43 can. Um, so this uh, less problem with five. It tends to be healthier in that way. Because what the five does, it's the creative flow. Uh, rather than using, being limited by rigid logic and beliefs, it, it's inspirational and creative. Uh, not as inclined to be as transcendental, but it's just the free flowing feeling of life and not being rigid. And it creates this fluidity and openness to experience life uh, openly. It's like being, uh, it's like having a massage, <laughs> you know, you're loosened up and you're free flowing. And typically as far as planets, Neptune or Jupiter in either the natal or the transits is usually involved. Uh, so we, we're, we see that here. We saw it in the th third video in, in this series of videos where Jupiter was strongly involved. Jupiter or Neptune, almost always at least one, typically both of them involved because of this feeling of expansiveness. And 12th house, many aspects to Saturn or many seven vibe uh, aspects in the birth chart give a basic motivation for seeking deep answers. So they are all sometimes involved. We say the 12th house can be spiritual. Yes, actually that's true. But the 12th house in itself is not going to give you a transcendental experience, not even close. You need these vibrations like 7, 91, 43 to do it. But why does 143 vibration person go to more of a, what we call spiritual, like a uplifting feeling, another more of a bleak feeling? The rest of the chart will tell us what's going on. And whenever there's 12th house, the person is seeking answers to what's going on in life. So it, it can help a little bit towards these things. Here's a little addendum about orbs. If you're new to vibrational astrology, what orbs we use. Um, for compatibility and transits, we use about half of these orbs. Um, and these orbs look strange if you're not uh, familiar with vibrational astrology. I have a series of videos. You know, they're the free videos that are on YouTube. 
um, on how to interpret harmonic charts. And that's it. That's the end of part four. I might make a part five. I'm not sure yet. Um, one of my friends and colleagues, uh, Linda Berry, has noticed something very interesting. I'm going to look at what she sent me. It looks like it might be worth making a video out. And anyway, I'll think about that. Um, anyway, to learn more about vibrational astrology, um, well, you know about the astrologydc.com because you're here. And there's the annual Vibrational Astrology Conference, which will be online. It will also be in person if possible. Okay, and some other sites. And okay, my friends, that's it. Uh, I have to say this is one of my favorite videos because, wow, um, these are some of the latest discoveries and insights. Okay, I'm at about 41 minutes. Okay, thank you very much for listening, my friends. God bless. Namaste.